Greetings, fellow detectives, and welcome to Boiler Room Detective. The case for 2 PSI. When I parked my truck outside the boiler room, I saw a thick plume of steam chugging from a pipe on the outside wall. Right away, my spidey sense started to tingle. The maintenance director met me at the door, and we walked in. I was there to give him a price to replace the leaking steam boiler. While walking through the boiler room, I noticed the black condensate pipe freckled with squares of red rubber gasket material held in place with hose clamps, an inexpensive way to fix a pipe leak. A pair of old feed water pumps were on the floor by the boiler feed unit. Nowhere did I see any provisions for water treatment. While gathering nameplate data from the boiler, I saw the boiler was only 10 years old. The operating steam pressure control was set to start at 7 PSI with a 2 pound additive differential, meaning the boiler ran between 7 and 9 pounds. My gut told me this was a room where boilers were sent to die. Pressure One of the questions I like to ask in my classes is, what is the proper pressure setting for a comfort heating steam boiler? The responses vary from 2 to 14 PSI. So, what is the proper steam pressure setting for a steam boiler for comfort heating? Since December 1899, the industry standard for low-pressure steam systems has been 2 PSI. When I tell the class about the design pressure, many will look at me, disbelieving. I will then tell them the Empire State Building in New York City, at the height of 1,250 feet and 102 stories, uses 2 to 3 pounds of steam pressure to heat the building. If they can heat a building that size with 2 to 3 pounds of steam, you should be able to do the same with your building. By the way, the Empire State Building won a LEED Gold Certificate for Energy Efficiency. Volume While the system is cold and the boiler off, the pipes and radiators are full of air. On a call for heat, the burner heats the water until it becomes steam. When water becomes steam, the steam volume is 1,600 times that of the water. It is like that expanding foam you use for sealing cracks, only much better. For a steam system to operate correctly, the air has to be removed from the pipes and replaced with steam. Since the two gases, steam and air, cannot occupy the same space, steam at a higher pressure will push the air from the pipes through the air vents or traps. Imagine your job is to fill a pipe with the least amount of balls, and the only two options are ping pong or tennis balls. Since tennis balls are larger, you would use fewer tennis balls than ping pong balls to fill the pipe. When you have steam at 2 PSI, the volume is 23.5 cubic feet. Think of this as a tennis ball. Steam at 7 PSI is 19.9 cubic feet. This would be the ping pong ball. You would need to generate 18% more steam at 7 PSI than you would need at 2 PSI to fill the pipes. Boiling temperature. Since we were in primary school, we were taught the boiling temperature of the water is 212 degrees. There should be an asterisk after that number, as water only boils at 212 degrees at sea level and atmospheric pressure. Water boils at different temperatures at various pressures. For example, at 2 PSI, water will boil at 218.6 degrees. If the boiler pressure is 7 PSI like this boiler, the water will boil at 232 degrees, or 6% higher than at 2 PSI. Flash steam. If the condensate temperature is above 212 degrees and released into a pipe at atmospheric pressure, a certain percentage of the condensate will flash to steam. This flash steam adversely affects the efficiency of the system. Flash steam on commercial systems wastes energy because the steam vapor is lost from the air vents on the condensate tanks. That lost steam results in fresh water being introduced into a steam system, increasing the possibility of scale and reducing the system's life. Flash steam was what I saw when I parked outside the boiler room. If condensate flashes to steam inside the condensate pipes, it could cause the system to stall, and there would be comfort complaints. This is because the condensate pipes are sized for condensate and not steam. Condensate flashes about 0.67% at 2 pounds steam pressure. At 7 pounds pressure, the flash steam percentage is 2.8%, or about 300% more. Steam traps Steam traps typically open once the condensate temperature drops 10 to 20 degrees below the steam temperature. Steam at 2 pounds pressure is about 218.6 degrees, which would make the condensate temperature about 198 to 208 degrees. At 7 PSI, 
the steam temperature would be 232 degrees with a condensate temperature between 212 to 222 degrees. Condensate return. When the condensate returns from the system, it has to be returned to the boiler. Commercial steam systems usually do this with a boiler feed or condensate pump. If the condensate temperature exceeds 212 degrees, it could flash to steam and damage the pump. In addition to the pump damage, the pump cannot pump steam, so the boiler will go off on low water. I saw this disclaimer on a condensate pump. For best operation, condensate should be 160 degrees Fahrenheit or less. Although name of manufacturer pumps can operate at higher temperatures, we cannot guarantee full capacity or satisfactory operation if condensate is allowed to go above 190. Total heat. Many people feel that steam must be set higher to get the required heat. In process facilities, that may be true. If the system is for space heating, there is a slight difference in total heat between 2 and 7 psi. At 2 psi, the total heat is 1153 BTUs, while there are only 4 more BTUs when the steam pressure is at 7 psi. If the system cannot heat the house or building at 2 psi, it is the system, not the boiler. You have to don your investigator cap and find the reason. If you would like to contact me, my contact information is here. In addition, I have two websites. Brewingwithsteam.com has my monthly blog post on steam systems for breweries, and Fire Ice Heat is my company website. I have written 11 books on boilers, and they are available on Amazon. In addition, you can find some of my writings in these fine publications. Thanks for stopping by Boiler Room Detective, and I hope to see you on the next case.